Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be looking at rigid bodies. So rigid bodies are objects that are controlled by the physics engine, meaning that we can apply forces to them, and they'll react accordingly, colliding with other objects in the scene. If we want to move an object, but don't care about collisions, we can just move it with transform.translate inside of the update method, as we've been doing up until now. As you know, the update method gets called just before the scene is drawn to the screen. So the first update occurs at time zero, and then perhaps 15 milliseconds later the update method is called once again, it moves the object to its new position, and the next frame is drawn. Now imagine for whatever reason that the frame rate drops, and the next frame is drawn 65 milliseconds later. The object obviously needs to move a lot further between frames 2 and 3 than between frames 1 and 2, since more time has passed. As we've talked about before, this is why we always multiply our object's velocity by delta time, the time between frames. Now there's another update method called fixed update, which we almost always use when we're working with rigid bodies. Unlike update, fixed update doesn't care when the scene is drawn, instead it's called at a fixed interval, the default being every 20 milliseconds. So we'd have our first fixed update call at time zero, then 20 milliseconds later it would be called again. Note that the object's new position will not have been drawn onto the screen yet, because fixed update was called after the last frame was drawn. So fixed update continues to be called every 20 milliseconds, and the object's position is updated inside of the physics engine. Finally, at the 80 millisecond mark, the object's position is drawn onto the screen. Now, all of these extra fixed update calls might seem like a waste of processing power, since the player obviously only sees the result when the frames are actually drawn. However, when dealing with physics, these extra calculations are necessary. If there's a wall we want to collide with, for example, but the frame rate drops, we still need to calculate all the in-between steps so that the object doesn't simply pass right through it. If the object is moving very fast, of course, it's still possible that it won't collide with the wall even in fixed update. To rectify this, we could simply increase the rate at which fixed update is called, making it, say, every 5 milliseconds instead of every 20. Obviously this would come with a huge cost in processing power though, so in later episodes we'll discuss techniques for dealing with very fast moving objects such as bullets, but for the vast majority of cases our fixed update every 20 milliseconds will handle collisions just fine. Let's have a look at how we do all of this stuff inside Unity. So to start with, I'd like to create a player object that I can move around the scene and just have collide with obstacles. So let's create a cube object and I'll just rename this to player. And then if we go onto the component menu, we can go physics and add a rigid body component so that the object is now physics enabled. You can see if we press play, the object will fall down because gravity is being applied. So let's create a plane object to act as a sort of floor. And we can just move the player above that. And let's maybe just scale this out to 10 by 10. So if we press play now, the, uh, the player will come to rest on the ground plane. Let's create a c -sharp script called player, and I'm just going to attach that to the player object and then open it up. All right, so to start with, we're going to want to get a reference to the attached rigid body component. So up at the top here, let's create a rigid body variable, just call this something like my rigid body. And then we can set that inside of the start method by saying my rigid body is equal to, and then we'll make use of the get component method. Now the get component method is what is known as a generic method, and I'll talk more about these in a later video, but the syntax differs slightly from calling a regular method. We start off with a pair of angle brackets, and then as per usual, we end off with a pair of parentheses and a semicolon. So inside of the angle brackets, we need to specify a type. And in this case, we're trying to get a component of type rigid body. So we simply write rigid body between the angle brackets. So now we'll be moving the rigid body around in the fixed update method, but we still want to get our input inside of the update method. So let's create a vector three and call this input is equal to a new vector three. So for the x-axis, let's get input dot get axis raw horizontal zero for the y-axis and then for the z-axis input dot get axis raw vertical. All right, and then we can create a vector three 
direction will be equal to input.normalized. And then we can figure out our velocity from that. It will be the direction multiplied by some speed value. So let's create a speed variable up at the top here. Can maybe make that public so we can edit it in the inspector. Public float speed, I'll set it equal to six. So now we can say vector three velocity is equal to direction multiplied by speed. All right, let's go ahead and create our fixed update method. So just like update, fixed update is called automatically by mono behavior, so we don't need to worry about calling this method ourselves. So inside of here, we're going to want to be able to access the velocity variable. So instead of declaring it inside of the update method, I'm actually going to declare it up at the top here, vector three velocity. So now when we want to move our rigid body around, we can simply say my rigid body dot position plus equals, so we'll add to it the velocity multiplied by time dot fixed delta time, which is just the time between fixed update calls. Now, as I mentioned earlier, fixed update is called at a constant rate. So time dot fixed delta time won't change unless we change it ourselves. Uh, if we want more or less frequent physics updates, or if we modify the game's time scale for cool slow motion effects. It's worth mentioning that we can also just write time dot delta time. Uh, it's smart enough to realize that it's being called from inside of the fixed update method, and it will return the correct fixed delta time value for us. All right, so let's save this and go into Unity. I'm quickly going to create a new cube object to act as an obstacle. And we can maybe just spare a moment to create two materials just so we can see what's what. Call this the player, duplicate that, call this obstacle. Maybe make the obstacle a sort of reddish color. And the player can just be a dark gray. Just assign those quickly. And then from the top here, I'll just duplicate this obstacle a few times and maybe just scale it out. I'll rotate this one. All right, just get a very simple scene set up. And then let's enter play mode. So we can move the player about with the arrow keys. And if we walk into one of these obstacles, you can see that we don't just move right through it. Thanks to the rigid body and the physics engine. Um, we might not want this sort of rotation to happen when we're colliding with things. So what we could do is go into the rigid body here, open up the constraint settings and just say freeze rotation on all axes. You can see now if we collide with something, we will no longer rotate. Let's say that we want to create some coins to scatter around the world that the player must go and pick up. Now, we wouldn't want these coins to physically obstruct the player in the same way that the obstacles do, but we would still want to use the physics engine to tell us if the player is touching a coin so that he can pick it up. So to see how we do this, I'm just going to create a new cube object, and I'll just make this nice and small, like a coin. And let's make a new material, call that coin, make it a nice shiny yellow color. Just apply that there. It's a little bit hard to see against this white background. So I'll maybe make a ground material as well. Make that dark gray and then change the player to a white. All right, so on this coin object, let me just name that here. I'm going to specify that the box collider is a trigger, and this will tell the physics engine that the player should ignore collisions from this collider. So you can see if we walk around, we will just pass straight through it. Now, even though the collision is being ignored, it is still being registered by the physics engine, and we can ask to be notified of it inside of our script. So if we go into the player class, we can create a void method called onTriggerEnter, which takes in a collider variable, which I like to call the trigger collider. 
make sure that you spell on trigger enter correctly with the right capitalization as well. Uh, otherwise, it won't be called automatically. So inside of here, let's just do a little printout. We can print out the name of the object we've collided with by saying trigger collider. And we can get the game object that that collider is attached to by saying dot game object. And then we can get the name of that game object. All right, so let's try that. Press play and you should see that as soon as we walk through this coin, coin gets printed out into the console. Now, just to point out a few things about the on trigger enter method, uh, in order for it to work, the script that it is in, of course, needs to be attached to one of the two objects that is actually doing the colliding. So in this case, it would be either the coin object or the player object. Secondly, since it is specifically on trigger enter, one of the colliders does need to be marked as a trigger. So in this case, the player collider is not a trigger since we want it to collide with the obstacles, but the coin object is a trigger, so it works. Finally, at least one of the colliding objects has to have a rigid body attached. Otherwise, the physics engine is just going to ignore it. So in this case, obviously, our player object has a rigid body attached, so everything's working fine. But in some cases, you'll find that you want to be notified of trigger collisions, but you don't necessarily want all of the physics that comes bundled with the rigid body component. So what you do then is you add the rigid body to the object anyway, since you have to for the trigger to work, but then you just check the is kinematic checkbox, and that will basically disable all of the physics of the rigid body. As you can see here, if I press play, the object isn't falling down due to gravity, and I can just waft through these uh, obstacles. However, moving through the coin, the coin collision is still registered. Now, in a typical game, of course, there won't only be coins, there'll be many other objects that make use of triggers as well. So inside of our onTriggerEnter method, we're going to need a way to tell what sort of object we've just collided with. So uh, to do this, we usually make use of tags. You can see there are a bunch of predefined tags here. You can also add tags. So let's add a new tag called coin. And then if I go onto the coin object, I can just choose the coin tag we've created from this dropdown. And now I'm just going to create a bunch of coins scattered throughout the level. And then if we go into the player script, let's just delete this printout. And we can say if trigger collider dot tag is equal to coin, then we know we've collided with the coin object and we'll want to destroy that object from the scene to show that we've picked it up. So we can use the destroy method and we'll pass in trigger collider and we want to destroy the whole object. So we get the game object that the collider is attached to. And then say we have a variable up here, we can just call it our coin count. Then we can just increment our coin count variable by one each time that we touch a coin. So let's save that and press play. And let's now walk around and collect our coins. All right, so that's everything this episode. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks to everyone who supports these videos on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.